Now we're going to take a look at the relationship between the boiling point of water and the partial pressure of, of moisture in the air we call vapor pressure. So what we, what we looked at in the last video is that if we have a container of water which is then surrounded by another container holding air within that container, we can see that there's an interchange between water molecules between the water in the cup and the air in this larger container. And typically, if the air in the container is not saturated, which means if it doesn't hold as much moisture as it can hold, there's a limit of how much it can hold, then more water will go from the cup into the air as there will be from the air going back in the cup. So normally this is exchange of water molecules, but the predominant number of molecules will be out of the water into the air, not from the air back into the water. However, as this air becomes more and more saturated, when that limit is reached, that the air can hold no more water, then the traffic between the air and the water will now be two-directional in an equal amount, and that's when equilibrium is reached. When equilibrium is reached, the same number of molecules will leave the water as enter the water, and no more moisture will build up in the air. We can then say the air is saturated, and that depends upon the temperature of the air. As we can go over here, we notice that the amount of the partial pressure of the water vapor will increase with increasing air temperature. At zero degrees centigrade, the partial pressure of moisture in the air of water vapor is only 4.58 millimeters, which is about 0.6% of the total pressure of the air. However, at 20 degrees centigrade, that will have increased to over 2% of the total pressure in the air. At 30 degrees centigrade, that will be almost 4% of the total pressure in the air and so forth. So with higher and higher temperatures, the air can hold more and more moisture. So more and more moisture, more and more water vapor can go into the air and be held by the air. Turns out, finally, when a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade is reached in the air, the air can hold so much water that can be 100% water vapor. There'll be 760 millimeters of mercury. Of course, that scenario is an extremely unlikely scenario. But what that means, though, is whenever the temperature is reached where the air can hold as much water as the total pressure of the air, fully saturated water, then that will then become the boiling point of water. And that is why water boils when the water reaches a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. Now what happens when the air pressure lessens? Let's say we go up in the mountains where the pressure is less, water can boil at lower temperatures. Let's say we go high enough in, into the mountains where the air pressure now is 525.76 uh, millimeters of mercury instead of 760, that means that the water will now boil at 90 degrees centigrade. What if we go so high up in the mountains when the, that the, the pressure of the air is now only about half of what it is, maybe a little bit less than half of what it is at sea level, water will now boil at 80 degrees centigrade. So that means that uh, water will fully come to a boil at those particular pressures. Now if we do that on a diagram, if we take a look on a diagram like this, on the vertical axis we have pressure, on the horizontal axis we have temperature. You can see that the curve is kind of exponential like this, and at 100 degrees centigrade, water will boil at 760 torr, or 760 millimeters of mercury. At, water will boil at 90 degrees centigrade when the atmospheric pressure is 525. Uh, millimeters of mercury. And notice water will boil at zero degrees centigrade when the pressure is 4.58 uh, millimeters of mercury, which is kind of interesting because that happens to be roughly the pressure on the surface of Mars, which means on Mars water will actually boil at zero degrees centigrade and of course it will also freeze at zero degrees centigrade. So on Mars, on the surface of Mars, water can actually boil and freeze at the very same time. That would be kind of an interesting scenario. But notice again that the amount of moisture that can be held in the air is simply a function of the partial pressure which increases as a function of temperature. And when that temperature then reaches, uh, the air reaches high enough so that the partial pressure of the water vapor can be the full pressure, at that point water will boil. And so there you can see the relationship between vapor pressure and the boiling point of water.